Al, it's time to remember your dreams. Oh. Or lack thereof. Yep. <laughs> I mean, those are both true in this instance today. Yep, yep. Very much so. Hello, welcome to this week's episode. Jared now watch Love Live Nijigasaki High School Idol Club. This is episode number 20. I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello. We are discussing season two, episode number seven, entitled The Memory of Dreams. Because you gotta remember your dreams. Dreams and my love life? It's more it's likely, more than, likely you think. than you think. <laughs> Good job. Oh, man. Brain cell at work. Brain cell at work. You're right. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we begin this episode with a flashback of small Shiriko in the crowd watching Kaoruko graduate from being a school idol while also commiserating the idea that she failed, or I guess her group failed to get into Love Live. Crying on stage. Crying on stage. And Shiriko's like, uh, uh, I don't know about this. Here we go. Uh. Uh. So that's kind of our setup for this week's episode. Um, after that, we see the, the idol club in the club room. Yu's working on something, and she's like, uh, give me more time to work on this. I'll make it good. And the girls are like, all right, cool. That's fine. Got to do what you got to do. And then they're also getting prepared to go to the first day of the School Idol Festival. The five-day School Idol Festival spread across five schools. Crazy. It's very fancy. Um, so they're very excited to go and do that and see all the, the groups and do everything, all of that fun stuff, yada, yada, yada. Um, Lanshu's there. She's also very excited to go look at everything. And she spots Shiriko as like because she, she, she's helping people get to places and all that sort of stuff. Um, and she's helping some lady and Lanji's like, oh no, Shiriko has no time for me. I'm sad. And Shiriko's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> what's, what is going on? <laughs> like, Nothing. I gotta go. <laughs> Shiriko's like, all right, whatever. Anyways, uh, here, it's, this is where you gotta go to get to this place, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> um, and then we see kind of like a montage of various performances that are happening, um, from the, the, the schools that are, you know, performing and everything. Uh, we get to see some cool things, like, they reference Kanata's normal card outfit, like, her, like, original, original one, <laughs> which is definitely a, a huge throwback. Yep. <laughs> so I thought it was just a cool, neat touch that they did, because, you know, she was one of the three cards that they took from School Idol Festival and obviously made Nijigasaki out of, so I thought that was, like, a really neat, you know, reference to put in there as well. Um, Performing with her sister at one point. Yes. Uh, we also see some other performances along the way for like the first three days of it. Like Kyrene goes to performs with one of the schools. Um, I like that Emma was with like the school that she was in in School Idol Festival. She was with like the international school. Yes. Like she I think her outfit them. might have been also a reference to her original card as well. I think so. Which is cool. Like the only one who didn't get one of those was uh, Shizuku. Shizuku, yeah. Which I guess it would be weird. I, I don't know where they, where they would fit her in. Mm -mm. Or if like her original school is even in the... I don't, I, I don't know where her original school is, so I don't know if they've like referenced it in the story or not. So I don't know if they could have really fit that in or anything, but yeah. Um, well, we and she, see... just, she was performing like at the beginning of the episode with uh, as her uh, subunit. Right. That was the pre-show. It's fine. Oh, okay. Never mind. Um. The second years also do a performance with the the one school with the the Shunibyo girl, which I thought was very funny. Um, so yeah, we see all that happening throughout. Everyone's just having a good time, enjoying things. Um, the first years at one point have to go back to Nijigasaki and like get some stuff and supplies for everyone, and then they're gonna head to the next school and everything. And they run into Mia, who's just eating copious amounts of bergs. <laughs> So many Berg rappers. And they're like, Rita's like, hey, we should go talk to her and see if she wants to come to the, the School Idol Festival. And Mia's just like, no, I don't want to. Rita's like, Amateurs. Hey, uh, do, you, do, do you like burgers? So like, yeah, like they're about to go and, and uh, 
Rena's like, mm, uh, let's, 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 I got a plan here, guys. Come on, we'll, we'll, we'll get this. And they're like, hey, do you like burgers? I see, I see you like burgers. Man, it's a shame you're not coming with us to this school. They have this super secret burger there. And it's like, you can only get it at the School Idol Festival today. And would you happen to look here? I've got coupons for it. <laughs> wow. And what like, a quinky dink. God. Yeah, I'll I go guess for I'm the coming burger. along. God. But also that burger, it looks disgusting. It looks nasty. Like, she it's started eating it. a bun. Why is it purple? And it like looked the... like it reminded me of that one uh, Japanese Burger King burger that was like black. That had the oh, black right, bun. right, right. Like, I, like it's probably the not like look normal either. It's probably not like a bad tasting bun. It's just colored, but it just looks w weird. Okay, but like, do you remember like purple ketchup? I do remember it. I didn't eat it because I don't like ketchup. So. You don't like ketchup, but I'm saying like, you remember it existed, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, I am somebody who does like ketchup right. on cer on certain things. I could not stomach purple ketchup. Like there was just something wrong about it. <laughs> like, this and, isn't right. And that's how I felt about this burger. Is that it might have theoretically tasted fine, but it was just wrong. <laughs> I think that's fair. Um, so yeah, they're all walking around. Lanju shows up at one point and is just like. Why is Mia here? Why are you hanging out with these people? Why are what's, you here? What's and happening? Like, I got a burger. I got a burger. Don't judge me. <laughs> and they're all just like talking about seeing performances and everything. And Lonju's just being chill with everyone, which is a nice little touch. Mm -hmm. She's just chilling with everything. Um, they uh they go watch the the performance like I mentioned earlier with the the school and the. Niji second years and everything and then they go off and like tour or they, they get they hear that there's like a an exhibit that shows off the kind of like all the clubs like past members of the various clubs of the school and like one of them is the school idol club so they go mm -hmm. and like look at all the past members of the school idol club and then they stumble upon this photo of Karoko and Shiriko and they're like wait a minute <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> that just looks like Shiriko and then Karoko shows up and is like Hey, how's it going? Hey yo! Like, look at this! Oh, look at this! Look at this photograph! Look at this photograph! Every time I see it, it makes me laugh. Except not really, because it's sad. It is sad. Well, the thing that's worth mentioning is that um, she looks exactly like Shiriko when she's in high school, except for her hair has the red tips. Which I was like, well, I guess that means that that's natural, and not like her dying it. But or she's just been dying it for ever. A few years now. When she's like college kid, so like might be like a handful of years. True, but at the same time, I just thought it was a really nice touch that they look almost exactly the yeah, same. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, which makes me wonder if like Shiriko purposefully like cuts her hair that way and everything to like replicate her sister. I don't know. I mean, given the way that they kind of set up this episode, like that would definitely make a lot of sense. Yeah, I was like, huh. But they look almost exactly alike, so it was, mm -hmm. it was nice. Anyway, look at this picture. Yeah, so Kairuko kind of go, goes into her backstory like, yeah, you know, I was a school idol here and everything. Uh, you know, Shiriko had dreams of also, like, following in my footsteps to go be a school idol as well. And then, you know, bad things happened. We didn't make Love Live. And then something happened with Shiriko and just kind of broke her, essentially. Mm -hmm. She kind of threw all that away so she could do other stuff instead. Um. Which is, I think it's an interesting touch here because, like, we'll get into it later, but, like, they do bring in some of, of Shiriko's All-Stars characterization in this episode. But yes, finally. One of the things that All-Stars really kind of doesn't go into is, like, Kaoruka's backstory. Like, we know she was, like, a former idol and everything. And, like, she had all that stuff, and that's why Shiriko eventually, like, that was her dream originally. But, like, they right. don't really go into it as much as they do here, which I thought was really good because, like, one of the things that, like, Love Life shows you is, like, you know, the success stories because the main series is all about people going to love live and winning you know, right. eventually they you know, they will fail at first but eventually they will go on to win we really right. don't see a whole lot of like groups who struggle to get there who are unable to even get to like pass qualifications or anything and have to eventually just retire because you know they didn't make it they right. failed right. so like i thought it was a really neat touch to like add that kind of 
aspect to her backstory because you know like i said it's just one of those things you don't really see a whole lot in this series and it really fits you know the tone of this series in particular because of just the way they kind of not really focused on love live but also they can kind of showcase like hey not everyone who tries and attempts to go for love live is going to make it there Mm -hmm. you know this is a nationwide competition it's the same thing for like any sports story where like you know not everyone who 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 one has the goal to reach you know the top of the top for their specific sport, especially in high school and everything, they're not gonna. Not everyone's gonna make it there. Like it's a very select few. It's a very elite group who's going to make it there. Mm-hmm. So like, it's cool that they're kind of showcasing like this more realistic side of this competition that really hasn't truly been showcased a lot throughout a lot of the other main series. So I thought that was a cool touch. Um, mm-hmm. So after they talk to Kaoruko, they run into Shiriko and they're like. Yo, why didn't you tell us about this? <laughs> what is what's been going on? You should be a squad with us. And Shiri was like, Nah, nah, not not interested. Don't want to do that. I saw my sister go through all that. Not for me. I don't nope. want to deal with that. Nope. And Setson is like trying to give the argument of like, Well, I can, you know, if you want to still do the student council stuff, like I'm doing that same thing. You know, it's t- you, it's totally doable. And says, and Shiri goes kind of just like, Nah. Like, and this is kind of where she brings out that All Stars characterization of being like, people should do what they are meant to do, like what they are good at. That's what yep. they should be doing, which yep. was the crux of her All Stars characterization. Is like when she became the student council president, she wanted people to go into clubs that fit them the best, and not have them do what they wanted to essentially, because she didn't want people to have to go through failure essentially. And yep. have like regrets of like, oh well, I should have done this instead in my high school career, but I did this, and now, oh no, I'm very sad about all this because she feels like Kaoruku has regrets about how her school idol career ended because she failed to make it to Love Live, and she's you know she watched her sister fail at that point, and she's kind of carried that along with her through these past couple of years, and that's basically warped her dream of, or basically made it so she's kind of abandoned that dream essentially, right, and decided well. Clearly, my sister wasn't good enough to make it to Love Live, so she shouldn't have been doing that to begin with. That's why she failed. I can't do that same thing. I have to find something that I'm good at, and that's what I got to stick to doing. It's sad. Mm -hmm. It's very much like the way they kind of set this up as well, because like you see all the shots of like of how Kaoruku was like, oh, you know, I brought you here. I wanted you to see me be a school idol because, you know, Lanju moved to Hong Kong and you've been looking real lonely lately, so I want you to, you know, cheer you up and everything. Mm-hmm. And, like, it opens up the door for Shiriko to, like, learn about school idols and everything, and, like, she becomes real interested in everything. And we see, like, these, like, little montages of, like, her training with Kaoruku and doing all that sort of stuff. It's very reminiscent, obviously, of the Kurosawa sisters' story from Sunshine and everything, but, like, what if that story had taken like a darker turn where like, you know, instead of Ruby deciding, Hey, I want to become a school idol because I still really like these, even though Daya failed. Mm-hmm. What if I decided, Hey, I don't want anything to do with these at this at all. Right. You know, I want to abandon it because obviously Daya has, has a, a dis- distinct intense dislike of school idols as you know, it, it seems like from the onset of that series, like what if I just like, abandon that entirely and just don't even consider it when chica and the other second years come up to be like hey you should join us mm-hmm. all that sort of stuff so i thought that was an interesting little dichotomy that they kind of showcase here that's a good point to, that i didn't really think about yeah the other series and everything um but yeah shiriko essentially just refuses them and is just like yeah it's, that's not for me i don't want anything to do with it <laughs> um so they're kind of bummed about that, and there's like, what, what should we do? And there's also a scene where you could see like near the end of that conversation where like you kind of gets upset because Shiriko tries to kind of utilize the same arguments that you has been doing this whole time, which like she's like, I'm better off supporting you. Like mm-hmm. I shouldn't be the one going up on stage doing that sort of stuff. My role is to support you guys, and that's been used whole argument this whole time as well, mm-hmm. which. I think you kind of sees that like there's this whole facade happening with Shiriko and she's using that argument, but only as a crutch. So like use the person who can kind of see through that argument and be like, you're not telling us the whole truth here. Right. Um, so yeah, they all kind of have a group discussion. It's like, 
look, we I think she kind of wants to do this, but we don't know how to like get that out of her. Give and, her like, that push she needs. Yeah. Like Karin's kind of just like, look, she doesn't want to do it. She doesn't want to do it. Like we can't really force her to come with us and all that sort of stuff. Right. And use the one who's like, no, nah, I'm going to go figure this out and we're going to bring her in. <laughs> so they basically go find her again. And they're like, look, you've been working this whole time. It's a festival. Let's go see the sites. And, you know, you can get another understanding of, like, how the festival works as a, you know, someone who's just coming and being a participant, essentially. I do want to say it was funny because they're like, do you know what day it is? She's like, um, the fourth day of the festival? <laughs> it's the fourth day of the festival. <laughs> she was, like, so confused by them, like, coming in and yelling at her about it. She's like, ah, uh, ah. Uh. But yeah, then they did like tricycle races and shooting games and um, VR where she murdered Cessna. And... Yeah. <laughs> Cessna was very upset. She's like, what the heck? She was so mad. Yeah, so like they, they go do all that fun stuff and they're like, all right, we've got one more thing to go show you. And she's like, oh, oh what? Oh, okay. And Kairuga sees this as well. Like she sees them dragging her off. And they take her to the the school stage where, like, obviously she had seen Kairuko perform and everything. That's the this is the you know the origin of her dream and everything. And they're like, look, this is this is where this all started, right? You always wanted to be up on that stage and perform, like, like why can't you do that now? And Shiriko kind of goes into the whole thing of being like, well, look at what happened to my sister. Like, she clearly regretted everything that happened because she was so she was she was crying on stage because she failed. Like, I can't do that. I don't want to have these regrets and everything. And, like, Kyle Ruger shows up and is like, you know, I didn't regret anything. Like, I enjoyed that. Like, it made my high school career way more fun because, like, I had you supporting me and everything. And, like, not you, but, like, Shiriko supporting her. Yeah. <laughs> That's clarification there. And, like, it made it so much more fun. That's why I became, like, a teacher because I want to support students in that same way that, like, you know, I want people to have this feeling of happiness when they're doing something that they really enjoy. She like, basically shows up and is like, yo, that's wrong. <laughs> You've got that wrong. Yeah, basically. Um. So, yeah, that kind of gives Shiriko the, the impetus to be like, hey, maybe I can actually do this now. Mm -hmm. Like, maybe I was, like, I was, I was obviously misinterpreting the situation. I was misinforming my own self. So, like, I guess I'll just give this a shot. So we get a song. Yep. Which is titled Emotion. It's all Emotion, caps. all caps. <laughs> um, very like time based, library based. Yep. Um, the interesting thing about this though is that there's a very clear reference in this video. Yep. That I was not surprised. Not 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 surprising. I was not, not expecting. expecting. I just said, um, the the feather motif. Yes. Um, which is obviously a thing that has been throughout every Love Live series, the main ones mm -hmm. in particular, that kind of like represents the, the dreams of the school idols and everything of like them getting to Love Live and everything and, you know, wanting to succeed and everything, whether it be saving their school or winning Love Live or, you know, whatever else they have. You know, it was in the first series. It was obviously very prominent in Sunshine. It's also in Superstar. And this is, I think, the first time we've really seen it in Nijigasaki. Yeah, it's the first time I remember seeing it. Because I think we would have mentioned it if we had seen it before. Yeah. But it's obviously a thing that makes sense to put in here. Because, like, her dream of being a school idol had vanished. And now she opens up this box and there's the feather. Yeah. Like, it's hello, in a book, the, right? It's in a book or something. It's, she opens up something and it's, and it's there. And it's like, here's my dream. It's back. I've found mm -hmm. it again. Yeah. And, like, it gives... Like, they give the feather, like, her color specifically. So, like, that's obviously... A thing that's kind of been a, a, a reoccurring theme as well because mm -hmm. like the the love the original love live one was white the sunshine one was blue now this one's the green um so i thought that was a really neat touch because like it's a very subtle reference that like if you pay attention to all the series you would quickly be like oh i know what that is i know what that represents yeah. but also if you don't you're just kind of like oh cool feather <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it, it's very prominent in the video and yeah um yeah, so so that that exists. And then I like how at the end of the the performance, like the the the, the big clock behind her, the like clock moves. starts moving, 
Yep. Obviously representing like, hey, this is the go time now. Yeah. Um, I have I have the same complaint about this song that I did with um, Kanata's Butterfly. That wasn't it's, mixed well. <laughs> it wasn't. It's not mixed well. It the music's so much louder than her voice. I would have to go back and re-listen. Mm-hmm. But I will take your word for it. Well, it even started like before her performance, like in the fr- like few minutes before she performed. For some reason, the background music was so loud. I'm like, what are <laughs> they doing? I hopefully when they put that in All Stars, it'll sound better. I I hope so. Um, because yeah, it was it was very poorly mixed. Um, and I I really couldn't figure out like what genre it is because it kind of just hopped all over the place yeah um and obviously like all of her prominent outfits were were featured we had uh her um like her casual outfits well i mean her like you in all stars um and then like her ur cards obviously her ur card well and her um sr um where was her berg card or was her I mean, the, the bird card was in there, but like, where was the the unidolized version of it? <laughs> right, right. Um, just, just have her just pop up in the middle of this serious Arr. like motifs and everything. Just Berg. Berg. <laughs> <laughs> just all Berg episode. That would be very funny. Um. um go ahead. No, you go ahead. I, I was gonna say, speaking of Oe Canar- Canaria, how did they pronounce it? Anyway, like jade green burb. Um, I, I don't know. I feel like I kind of have to like disconnect my brain and stop trying to compare her to anim or to game Shiriko. I mean, like, yeah, because like I don't think any of the the characters in this series are really throughout. From what we have seen so far, like they really aren't. This isn't an all stars adaptation. No. So, I, but I agree with you. It's, it's very hard to like disconnect the two because like the characterizations tend to be the same ish, but the stories are not. The stories aren't the same. right. So it's kind of strange to me to have like their relationship like completely repaired very whereas, quickly. Very quickly, whereas it is still not even repaired in All Stars at this yeah. moment. I mean, it's it's definitely a, a case of, like, you know, we talked about this last season where it's like, you know, they have so many episodes to get through, and obviously they've done quite a few different arcs this season in particular. Um, that is just like, you know, we have to do these arcs in the amount of time that we have provided, and at some points in time, that's going to mean that some of these are going to feel a little rushed compared to what you might want them to be. Um which I think is yeah. a very it's a very fair complaint to have and everything, um, given what we've seen. Um, but I thought for what you know the time that they had and everything, like they were able to kind of give you a pretty decent understanding of Shiriko's story and like what you know her issues were and everything, you know her issues with Karuko and and all that, and at least wrap it up in a way that made sense. Even though it was a lot quicker than perhaps may have needed to be. If that makes sense. I mean, like I said, it's not even, like, it's not repaired in, in the game at all yet. So, I mean, or not at all, but, you know, there's still some leftover feelings there that right. it just didn't really have here. But, I mean, I was texting you during this, and I was like, you know, I, I kind of miss her, her, her prickliness. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that that's one thing I really really miss about her is how like she can still be a little prickly even after like she's friends with him and joins up with them like yeah like the way her and Kasumi will go back and forth with each other mm-hmm. yeah and like you know she she talks about like how she has a uh, like a lot of responsibility as the person who's like in, in like the future person in charge of her family and mm-hmm. yeah. um like she has a very traditional style to her yeah. Um, and she just like kind of like grandpa angry a few times in the game which I love like she's just like I don't understand you kids 
I miss some of that prickliness. No, I completely agree with that. I, I just feel like it made her have a more unique character than... Yeah. Like, right now, she anime version doesn't have as much of that uniqueness that I really, really want. Yeah. Makes, makes me sad. No, I, I, I completely agree with that. Give me a little weird gremlin. Yeah. Maybe but, now that she's in the club, they'll unlock a little bit of that weird gremlin-ness. Yeah. That would be nice. It would be nice. Um... But yeah, she does the performance and everything, and then they're like, hey, do you want to come perform with us on stage tomorrow for the final day of the festival? She's like, no, I got work nope. to do. I nope. can't do that. <laughs> I'll join you guys after this yeah. is over. After it's over, though, I'm, I'll am completely come over. It's fine. Cool. Um, but I can't do I got I so much responsibility tomorrow. What are you talking about? Um, but yeah, that's how we end. But also, there's the scene where Lanju is seen from the distance and looking sad because oh, her friend's getting stolen from her. Mm-hmm. I'm sad. No. Sad Longju. And then we get the post credit scene of you presumably working on the new group song. And she very clearly says the word Tokameki. She does. So. Hmm. Interesting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so do you think... We're going to get a Tokimeki performance. It would make sense, but also at the same time, like, I feel like they would want to make new songs to sell. I would think so, but they used the the first single in um, Sunshine, so yeah, possible. And the thing that's confusing to me about, like, what it's going to be is that she said, no, I'm not going to join you, so it's not going to be like the Chapter 17 version, which is what you would think you would want, but... But the way they're 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 doing this, though, it feels like Yu's not going to have that song ready for the, the final day of the festival. Like, this is going to yeah. be like a season finale type thing. Ah, yeah. Because presumably the final day of the festival is going... I'd be very disappointed. Yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> but, like, the, the final day of the festival is going to be the next episode... Right. Because obviously we have that, and then still throughout this, the rest of the season, we'll have Mia's arc, a rebirth arc, maybe. Because I'm assuming <laughs> that's how they're going to get all of them back together. Right. Or get Lanju and Shiriko back together, and then whatever they do for the finale. Right. So. Presumably, I would have guessed that the Yu song is not going to show up for a good while. But. Don't yeah. give me Tokamiki for the finale. Don't do that. <laughs> I mean, do they have a version with all every member though? <laughs> they don't, but like, come on! <laughs> I I know, I know, I know. It would be kind of disappointing, but you know, that's why I kind of think like they wouldn't because like they would want to sell something new. Yeah, yeah, totally. But who knows? Shrug shoulders. We'll find that out as we go through the last what five to six episodes of this. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 5 to 6 episodes of this series. Or this season, I should say. Probably series as well, let's be real. But yeah, that's it for this episode. Yeah. Next time, we'll be discussing Season 2, Episode number 8, entitled The Place Where the Rainbow Begins. Mm. That's the Nijigasaki. It is the Nijigasaki. So we'll find out how they do on the final day of the School Idol Festival and what else pops up. Yeah. All that. Uh-huh. Um, that's going to do it for this week. If you'd like more from us, head on over to SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com or SAC.cool, where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podasts like Seasonal Anime Checkup OVA. Nope. That's the right one, not the other one. Uh, you can also find columns and reviews on the, the site as well if you'd like more from Anladium go to anladium.com she's got columns and reviews and you can find us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup you can buy our books One Shiny Moment of Critical Analysis of Love Life Sunshine and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com mm-hmm. so join us next week as we see the conclusion of the School Idol Festival presumably day five day five day five hey do you know it's day five day five <laughs>